was going back through some papers uh, this week because uh, this is one of my favorite stories for a lot of different reasons, but it dawned on me that uh, this is the passage that I preached on when I first uh, candidated here to be settled pastor back in July of blah, 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 blah. <laughs> 2009. This is such a powerful story because there is so much in it. As I was listening to it, I thought, how could these two travelers going from Jerusalem to Emmaus, hearing this stranger that knows all of these things about scripture and their fulfillment, not get that the stranger was Jesus? And then I think, well, maybe they weren't supposed to get it in that moment. Maybe they were supposed to get it when they got it. In that hour, exactly. Well, in a little over four weeks, our relationship with each other will change. We will enter a season of discovery in the unknown. For some of us, the mere thought of going into the unknown is thrilling. For many of us, the thought is scary. Many have been asking, as we alluded to earlier, what it is I plan to do upon leaving my work as pastor here and leaving this place that I've called home for nearly 16 years in one way or another. And as much as I'd like to give a clear, concise, orderly response, I feel compelled to share with you not what I plan to do, but how I plan to be. I plan to be present to my life in a way that I have never been present before. I plan to be present to the one who created me, who shaped me in unconditional love, and who has always been by my side, and who, even when I fought kicking and screaming, keeps bringing me back to my true, authentic self. I plan to enter this season of unknowing with a heart for discovery, empowered by courage. Now, those of you who know me know that I love the Wizard of Oz, and I could take off on that little tangent right now and, and sing the lion's song about how he gathered courage to go in a way that he never thought he could go. but I'm not gonna go there. What I am gonna say is that I plan to be open to the stirring of God's Holy Spirit to keep bringing me to the table where love is lifted, <coughs> blessed, broken, and shared. It is at the table where we discover a courage we never knew existed. A courage that will awaken in us a new way of being in this place and in this world. What I say for myself today, I offer to you as a way of being during this time of transition. Recently, I was talking with a couple of people in the congregation about whether or not I remembered a moment when things shifted for me. I think all of you know that, that I've really become very much an activist, uh, very much a believer in the work of social justice, which is nothing new to MCC. But it's, it's an area in which I've profoundly grown in the last several years. And as I was thinking about that turning point, it was interesting to note that it had to do with being a table with a stranger. On Tuesday, August 19th, 2014, I was sitting at the table in my office and I was reflecting on conversations I'd recently shared with three different same-gender couples 
who were preparing to arrive at the Roanoke City Courthouse the next morning go into the clerk of the circuit court's office and file for their marriage licenses. I plan to meet one couple, Kenny and Brian, early so we could be in line when the office opened, get their license, and then perform their marriage ceremony. On Wednesday, August 13th, the week before, the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals, in a statement issued by Judge Arinda Wright Allen, ruled the ban on same-sex marriage in Virginia unconstitutional. And unless the U.S. Supreme Court placed a stay on this decision to consider the case themselves, same-sex marriage would become legal on the morning of August 20th. The High Court was set to make a decision on the afternoon of the 19th, which is why I was sitting at the table in my office with every news feed I could imagine up on my screen. That moment, that hour, that day, felt for me a lot like the day must have felt for Cleopas and his friends who were walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus, who were ruminating on the loss they experienced in the death of Jesus and the curiosity of how their world would be different in light of his supposed resurrection. They were torn about how to feel, acknowledging their fear while awaiting some word about what would happen next. They were experiencing the unknown. And it's a strange place to be. What if, in a way, that turns conventional thinking on its head, we discover these unknowns as a new calling in our lives? In his book, Crossing the Unknown Sea, Work as a Pilgrimage of Identity, the British poet David White says, our great hope in wrestling with that unknown we must learn to call our life and our work is to find a way to call on our courage for all of the unknowns yet to come. And as I sat waiting for word from the U.S. Supreme Court, I thought about how love isn't bound by gender. gender. Love isn't bound by anything that we try and bind it by as human beings and our limitations. Love traverses through the limits of the broken human condition and transcends to make a new way. While Cleopas and his friend were walking that day, love showed up and began to walk along with them. They didn't recognize love. <coughs> because they didn't recognize within themselves the dormant courage awaiting new birth in their lives. They were lost in what was and what had been. Everything began to shift when they reached that fork in the road. Something about the stranger called to them. It could have been their natural inclination and tradition to extend hospitality to all strangers. Or perhaps it was something the stranger stirred within them, something they didn't yet understand, something that compelled them to invite him to their table. Around four o'clock on August 19th, with all of those news feeds open on my laptop, I saw breaking news flash, and I read that the Supreme Court was upholding the stay on same-sex marriage in Virginia, and that they would take up the case in the spring. Now that wasn't a complete surprise, but I will confess I disappeared into grief. I slumped in my chair, holding my head in my hands. And then 
in the middle of my sadness, something shifted. Like a stranger sitting at that table next to me, catching my eye, recognizing in me something I didn't yet see in myself, and breaking open a new way to be. When the stranger sat down at the table with Cleopas and his friend, he did something so simple. He took bread. It's right there on the table. He lifted it. He blessed it. And he broke it. And in the breaking of that bread, like a flash of quickening light, <clears throat> they recognized him. It was Jesus. Just like that, he was gone. What an extraordinary moment. Well, courage welled up within me in a way that I'd never experienced it before. And I decided that no matter what, Come 8 o'clock a.m. the next morning, when the clerk of the circuit court office opened, where I would have been meeting several couples seeking their marriage licenses, I would show up outside of the courthouse and hold a press conference to stand with and honor all those whose love and lives had been put on hold once again. I have no idea where that came from. I turned on my laptop, I sent out a press alert to local media contacts, I emailed several affirming clergy hoping that some of them would show up and stand with me, and I posted my intention on Facebook. The next morning I put on my suit and my collar, tucked my notes into my pocket, and for good measure, I put on my rainbow boa stole. <laughs> no, that's hilarious. One of my favorite writers is Brene Brown. She's written a book, she's written several books about vulnerability. And in her teaching about vulnerability, she talks a lot about courage. She says that courage originally meant to speak one's mind by telling all one's heart. When the stranger who had been with Cleopas and his friend all along was welcomed into the most intimate place of their lives, the table, he was also welcomed into their hearts. And once in their hearts, his love, both unconditional and unwavering, opened in them a movement from death to resurrection. This movement awakened their courage. It stirred them to acknowledge their fears and to keep going. That same Movement awakened my courage to walk from my home to the courthouse, to stand for and with strangers whose love had been compromised because the stranger who loved me before I even knew his name helped me see that walking into the unknown is about walking into eternal possibilities. We are all walking in unknown territory, uncertain about many things, uneasy about change, upended by our fears and questions, and yet opening our hearts to the courage the stranger is already shaping within us. We don't know exactly what will happen, but we do know how we can be present in and through it all. 
May the stranger lift our lives. Bless our unknowing. Break open our courage and share our passion for becoming who God is calling us to be.